How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another problem. This is a problem called frog jump. This is a hard question, so I feel like a lot of people will hopefully be happy that I'm going over a hard question. But again, I want to reiterate, I feel like the tags on lead code don't really mean that much. Don't buy into the difficulty. Uh, it's really, it's all relative. What's hard for me might be easy for you and vice versa. So don't read into it too much. Anyways, I think this is a good interview question. I think it's pretty fair. I think it's a good one also because it's easy to conceptualize. It's easy to kind of reason with. It's easy to think about this problem. So I think it's a good one to go over. So our problem description says a frog is crossing a river. The river is divided into X units and at each unit there may or may not exist a stone. The frog can jump on a stone, but it must not jump into the water. Given a list of stones positions in units in ascending order, determine if a frog is able to cross the river by landing on the last stone. Initially, the frog is on the first stone and assume that the first jump must be one unit. Okay, if the frog's last jump was k units, then the next jump must be either k minus one, k, or k plus one units. Note that the frog can only jump in the forward direction. Uh, and then we just have some constraints. Cool, the first stone's position is always zero, so that's probably a good one to have. And now we have an example. So if this is our first example. We're given the stone positions 0, 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 12, 17. It says we have a total of eight stones. The first stone's at position zero, second stone's at, uh, at the first unit, so on and so forth. And we would just return true here uh, because they're telling us that there actually is a path to cross the river, right? So the frog can actually jump to the last stone by first jumping one unit to the second stone, then two, two units to the third stone, two units to the fourth stone, three units to the sixth stone, four units to the seventh stone, and then five units to the eighth stone across the river. Awesome, so we would return true. Our second example is just an example where we can't actually cross the river because there's too big of a gap, so that's fine. So the reason why I think this is an easy question to visualize is you can very clearly think about a frog that has some sort of jump distance and it wants to cross the river and the only way it could do it is by not falling in the water, right? So it has a certain amount of positions it could potentially land on and it needs to try and cross the river by landing on those stones and it can only jump so far each jump at each position. So it's easy to think about, okay? And so I personally think about this like a video game, right? Like I, I don't know if any of you guys have played Frogger, but this is immediately what it reminded me of and I think it's, it's really easy to conceptualize. So again, think about it like in a video game, if you were playing Frogger or any other game where you're trying to get from one point to the next, at any point you could kind of die, right? And so the way I like to think about this is if the frog jumps into the water, we need to remember two things, right? We need to remember one, where it was previously before it jumped into the water. So at the very beginning, that might be you're at the first stone or maybe you're at the fifth stone, right? It kind of depends where the frog is and it's jumping. And the second thing we need to remember is if it is at the third stone, how far was the jump it took to get to that third stone, right? Because the problem tells us we can only jump K minus one units, K units or K plus one units from wherever we are based on our previous jump. So this is a classic DFS pretty much. Like we're just gonna try all different combinations. So at the first stone, we're gonna jump uh, every possible distance. At a fifth stone, we're gonna jump every possible distance we can. At the X stone, we're gonna jump Y possible distances to try and exhaust all our possibilities. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write a check to see if any two adjacent stones are too far from each other. So meaning if I'm at the third stone and I literally can't get to the fourth stone because it's too far, there's no way I can get to any other stone because our stone positions are in ascending order. So this is like math. I don't really wanna bog, get bogged down on the math because this is not the meat of the algorithm. This is not really the important part in my opinion, but we're just gonna write a quick check for that. So we're gonna say four int i equals three while i is less than stones.length i plus plus. And if our stones i is greater than stones i minus one, times two, we're gonna return false. Again, I don't really wanna go into why this is true. I don't really wanna pay attention to this math. If you guys wanna get into it, you can. But again, it's not the important part of this problem. It's not what the interviewer really cares about, I would imagine. So I'm gonna to stick to the stuff that does matter, which is how to do de uh, depth first search or DFS. So now, we wanna know always if we get to the last stone, right? So let's just store that as a variable. So int last stone, equals stones dot stones of stones dot length minus one. 
Cool, so that's our variable. We're gonna check it at some point to see, hey, have we reached the last stone? And if we have, we will return true. Now we said in our scenario where we're playing Frogger or any other game, we need those two things, right? We need to know the position we're currently at, and we need to know the jump distance of how, how far our jump was to get to where we are now. So we're gonna use two stacks, okay? And so our stacks are gonna hold those two things, the position we're at and all the other positions we can access as well as the jumps associated with each of those positions. So we're gonna make a stack, it's gonna hold integers. This will be called positions equals new stack. And then again, we're gonna have jumps. So stack of integer, this will be our jumps equals new stack. Awesome. And so now we know that the frog starts at the zeroth stone, right? So we can add a position. So positions.add zero. And we know that our jump distance uh, will be one, I think they said to begin with. Assume that the first jump must be unit one. So I'm gonna add zero to begin with, but you'll see why. So jumps.add zero. The way we're gonna write our code, we always wanna account for whatever our current jump is, we can jump whatever that jump was minus one, we could jump that exact jump again, or that jump plus one. So we're gonna write our code based off that. Now, we need to play the video game, right? So what we wanna do really is just try all the possible positions we have available and then all the possible jump distances associated with that position. So we're gonna say, while we're playing this game, right? So while we have positions, so while our positions is not empty, we can still try things, right? So now we need our current position. So we'll say int position equals positions dot, not remove, pop, because this is a stack. And now we need to know our jump distance, right? So we'll say int jump distance equals and we will say jumps.pop. So now we have the current position that we're at and we know how far we jump to get to this position. So now we could try our next jumps, right? So we could say four int i equals jump distance minus one because we can jump k minus uh, one units. Well, i is less than or equal to jump distance plus one because again, it could be k or k plus one distance i plus plus and now we're just gonna have a quick check right so we never want to be in a position where we just keep jumping up and down right so i'm not going forwards um so we're just gonna have a quick jump so if a quick jump a quick check so if i is less than or equal to zero right like it technically could be on our first iteration we just want to continue right because we don't want to jump backwards because we're not allowed to and we don't want to just keep jumping up and down on the same stone because that does nothing for us so that will help prevent us from doing that and now we need to calculate whatever our current position is plus our current jump distance where that will land us. So we wanna say int next position is going to equal our current position plus i, right? So whatever our current position is plus whatever we're trying to jump by, that will determine our next position. Cool, so now this is like us sitting on a stone as a frog, jumping some distance. Now we need to see where we're gonna land. So we have two things we care about, right? First thing is, did we get to the last stone? And the second thing is, did we get to another stone? So if our next position is equal to our last stone, right? Then we could just return true, return true. Because we've actually solved the problem, right? We were able to get to the other side of the river, which is awesome. Otherwise, we just wanna know if we landed on another stone. And if we did, we wanna record the position that we're at and we also wanna record the jump that we took to get there so that any of these next iterations, we will try those jumps from that position. So we will say, else if our, um, <clears throat> we wanna say all of our stone positions, right? We need to check if the number, if our next position is in our stones, but that could be costly, right? If we had to iterate through all the stones, so we'll make a quick hash set. So we'll say hash set, and this will hold integers, and we'll say stone positions equals new hash set. Oops. And then we'll just put all of our stones in this hash set. So we'll say for every stone that we have, for every stone in our stones, we'll say stone positions dot add our stone. Awesome. So now we could really quickly check here, right? So if our stone positions dot contains our next position, so again, if we jump from whatever our current position is plus some distance and we land it on a new stone, we need to make sure we add that to our jumps stack and our position stack. So we'll say positions.add 
our next position and we'll say jumps.add i, right? Because i is actually the distance that we jump by. So now guys, this is really it. So if we are ever in this loop and we return true, then we've reached the end of the river and our problem's over. Otherwise, if this loop terminates and we've never actually reached the other side of the river, we know we've tried every possible thing that we could potentially do, so we can just return false because we can't actually make it to the other side. So let's make sure this works. Awesome, and it does. So this is 94% faster than all the other Java submissions. Pretty decent runtime. Uh, again, this is how to solve frog jump in Java on leak code. I hope this was helpful, guys. I hope this was clear. If it wasn't, be sure to leave me a comment below, and I'd be happy to clarify any way I can. If this was helpful and you guys did enjoy this video, do me a favor, leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, there will be a link in the description. Uh, you guys can also join a Discord channel where you guys can ask me any kind of interview question you guys want, um, advice, stuff that you guys have in coming up, uh, experience, anything code related, you guys are free to ask me. Uh, but yeah, so I hope this is helpful, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh,